Hello everyone, and welcome to the third official Project Contingency question and answer session. I'm r 93 Sniper, your community manager, and today I'm joined by a guest. What's up, my name is Josh. I'm one of Contingency's community coordinators as well as a systems programmer. I'm usually the guy on our Twitter account, but I'm also getting more active in our Discord server. We know it's been a while since you've last heard from us, so allow us to begin by saying that yes, we're still working on the game. We've been radio silent for a bit primarily because our team has been hard at work trying to deliver the best game we can possibly make. To make up for that, we're going to have a longer video this time, and you might even get to see some new gameplay too. Let's go ahead and get started answering some of the questions you all have been asking since our last video. The first thing I want to address is why we haven't said much in the public light since our last video. Essentially what ended up happening was we went into a serious crunch and everyone had ended up having to focus on their assignments. We also ended up hitting a few scheduling conflicts as the holidays showed up, so we weren't really able to put a video out on time. One of my jobs going forward is to make sure we're collaborating with more members of our community, as well as doing things like hosting a bi-monthly podcast in which we will bring updates to development. On top of this, we're also looking to have monthly blog posts on our website, so keep an eye out for those. An interesting question that we've received was asking if we'd be supporting ultra-wide monitor setups. Unbeknownst to all of you, we already do support ultra-wide. We've made an effort to support as many weird configurations that people use as we realistically can. Luckily for us, Unreal Engine makes this process relatively simple and supports many things out of the box, making our job a lot easier. For reference, here's a picture of one of our maps running on a 21.9 monitor setup. Let's talk about localization. This is something we get asked about everywhere we go, and this is something I've been advocating for internally. This really is something that we want to implement, however there are some issues with this. The main problem is the localization feature built into Unreal Engine 4. Uh, it's still in an experimental phase, and while we can work around this, it probably would be best if we didn't. Once Unreal 4 finalizes this feature, or gets it to a point where it's stable enough for us to confidently implement it into the game, we'll be sure to reach out to you guys to see who all will be interested in helping us translate the game. This has come up a few times in our YouTube comments, as well as on our Discord server, but people want to know whether or not we will be supporting the Vulkan API or DirectX 12. For us, this is a mixed bag. First and foremost, we have integrated both into Project Contingency, but mostly as a test more than anything. Using Vulkan requires us to change how we handle some shaders and materials, so trying to adapt our workflow to meet those requirements also means that we need to adjust. If at all possible, we will try to have support for both, but right now we have to experiment and see where it leads us before giving the definitive answer. Something that's a little bit more technical in nature is the fact that Unreal Engine 4 has a visual programming feature called Blueprint. We've been asked by a handful of people whether contingency is built up using Blueprints or C++, and the answer is actually both. While yes, you can exclusively use either system, we've opted to use a hybrid approach which, as it works best for the team. We generally tend to use Blueprints for most everything related to player interaction systems, whereas more complex backend systems like networking is done through C++. While the hybrid approach we're going for is probably a travesty for people who are advocates for the downfall of Blueprints, the system has worked out better for us in both the short and long term. Before using Unreal Engine 4, we had issues with programmers who couldn't keep the game in a stable state for various reasons. Blueprints especially help make this impossible as we can always fall back on previous iterations of code that's stable or just unplug what isn't working. There's also the complaint that Blueprints by design aren't visually messy, but realize that you can have horribly messy C++ code as well, and it's not hard to do either. One of the things that we're asked about quite frequently is distribution and networking. Are we using Steam? Uh, are we using Battle.net? Are we using Origin? This is actually where I come into play in all of this. I am responsible for managing the development of our launcher. Without getting too much into how our launcher works, I'm going to go over some things very quickly. The launcher in its current state is pretty heavily inspired by uh, Blizzard's Battle.net launcher, and as such will be as modular as possible. What I mean by this is that the launch will actually be able to support more than just contingency. We've been working with some other developers of other Halo fan games, and we're happy to say that as long as they continue to operate within Microsoft's GCUR, Glast will also be distributed through the launcher we're developing. Aside from featuring Glass, we'll also be making the original CryEngine version of Contingency available through the launcher as well. Something that does need to be addressed is anti-cheat, and while this isn't something that gets talked about or asked super often, it does get around, 
so since I'm here, I might as well go ahead and talk about it. As someone that has experienced writing cheats for many years that have both been creative and also competitive, I know how much damage cheats can bring to a player base. Because of this, we're implementing server-side checks to detect a lot of common cheats. We also plan to implement some form of external anti-cheat solution, and I've already written up some stuff on how we'll be securing the launcher. As for the repercussions of those found cheating, well, in the words of the great moot, since we showed off our game's split-screen capabilities, we've had a few people ask if we're going to be supporting multiple keyboards in conjunction with being able to turn the keyboard off. For us, this is something that we don't actually have the ability to support offhand. I know it's a weird thing to say, but the issue isn't if we can program to support it, but instead it's an issue based on hardware. Multiple keyboards all consume the same input, and you would manually have to find a way to split the input per keyboard, like what is done automatically by any sort of exploit controller. If you can manage to get that to work, it should be possible for you to be able to play the game like that, but it's not something that we'll be able to support out of the box, so to speak. Alright, so we know that both Spartan and Elite customization is a big deal to you guys. Don't worry, it is for us too. What we're planning for in terms of how much you can actually customize is probably somewhere between Halo Reach and Halo 4. We want you guys to be able to make badass looking Spartans and Elites, but we also don't want it to become a gimmick. Unfortunately, we haven't already done tons of work in this area, but it's definitely something that we are working on. However, it's just not our main focus right now. Like I said though, don't worry, Contingency will have armor customization. Outside of this, we of course will have support for changing and customizing your emblems, as this has been a part of the series since bef even before armor customization, and this is something that we already have implemented in the game. One thing that was a major point of Contingency is massive scale combat. We're talking our large 32 vs 32 game modes that were advertised back in CryEngine. However, since the switch to Unreal, people have been asking if we'd be holding ourselves to that. I personally made mention of this in the status update that came out shortly before this April 2017 update, but allow me to speak about that a bit more. For those who have been following along a bit more closely with development, you may know that we're relying on our own networking solution for the game, which has its own benefits and drawbacks. One of the biggest things that we have to worry about is performance, as nobody likes to play a lacking game. We've constantly been iterating on our code to make it as low cost to networking as possible, but unfortunately we run into the issue that everything runs on an exponential curve. We do plan on making this dream a reality and trying our best to ensure we can, but we cannot completely guarantee its inclusion unfortunately. Something we get asked quite a bit is if we're going to take the game to either Mac or Linux. Um, the short answer is no, kind of. Essentially, um, we're going to experiment with Mac after we launch. Linux, however, will not receive the same treatment. For more information on why, check the description for a link to our website. There I've written an article about our launcher and how it's progressed over time, but within that article I also talk about the technical details regarding our justification uh, for how we're handling Mac and Linux support. A slightly obscure question that was asked to us was how many maps are in production? This question actually has two answers. As of this time, there are roughly 20 playable maps in our build in various states of development. However, our current focus is on 6 of those maps, using them as the test beds for various environment types, but also to be a good standard for the quality of our level design and level flow. Along with this, we keep on being asked what our design philosophy is like, and ideally, we want to keep our levels true to the Halo style, but also unique in both design and execution. Another obscure but still very important question is whether or not we're going to implement a sort of FPS cap into the game. So, long story short, we are, but we are not. By default, there's not going to be any cap, but if you wish to set one, you can cap your FPS in-game through the settings to either 30, 60, 100, 120, or 144. Here's a fun question. How are we placing our crosshairs on the screen? Halo has, since Halo 2, been using crosshairs that were below the center of the screen. However, this was done because of how you play on a television screen as opposed to a computer screen. Since we're designing for people playing on a computer, we're rolling back to the paradigm of using the centered crosshairs. We currently don't have any plans for supporting non-centered crosshairs, namely because of the issues concerning aiming. However, if there's enough community interest for it, we may give it some consideration. Now I think the most important question we get asked, and we get asked this question everywhere, will Contingency have first-person legs? <laughs> Thank you. 
And now, time for the last question. How long has Project Contingency been in development? So this one is sort of an odd question, namely due to the circumstances surrounding the project. Realistically, the project has only been in development for three years, since March 24th of 2015. That statement might confuse some of you since you can recall that prior to that, we were in CryEngine, dating back to CE3 2013. However, back at the time, Project Contingency was not its own project, it was simply a rebrand of a different game. When we switched to Unreal Engine, the last members of that project had left, and we had reevaluated and changed the goals of the project. Since then, the game has changed entirely, and now what's being developed is not a derivative work of the previous project. So that's all we have time for today. As we said earlier, we're going to make an effort to put out more original content on a more consistent basis with less time between updates. Be sure to check out our website for the mini updates as well as the blog posts, and also be sure to join our Discord server if you want to chat with us or hang out with other members of the community. Our Discord server has well over a thousand members and it's still growing. Be on the lookout for more announcements in the coming weeks, and hopefully we'll see you all soon. Until next time! So, while searching for questions for this video, I found an interesting comment in one of our YouTube videos. Apparently this guy saw our fan game and is making his own game after seeing how hard we're working and how far we've gotten. So, big shout out to this guy, and hopefully your project goes well, dude.